Although we have only 40 facial muscles, we can generate over 10,000 facial expressions, and often we do so involuntarily. We can choose to move our facial muscles and can do so without emotion. But when we feel an emotion, it often shows up in our face. When we feel, we show. Naturally, the display rules vary between cultures. You might quickly cover up your initial expression, but we all feel and show surprise. Even if we then cover our faces or avert our eyes, the initial reaction seems to be built in. The shortest facial expressions are called micro-expressions. They are quick, reflexive responses before the cultural rules kick in. You know from watching television and movies that some emotions are easy to portray and others quite difficult. It's never very satisfying when people try to act surprised. That may be because surprise is such a fleeting emotional state. It appears very quickly and disappears rapidly too. So any attempt to hold a surprised expression just looks phony. Facial expressions, gestures, and body language are much easier to decode if you know what the person is feeling. If you know they are angry at you, you can easily see it. But the reverse is not always easy to do. Surprise and fear are both shown in raised eyebrows, so we use context to help us determine which emotion we are seeing. We use the same rules when dealing with animals. We believe we can generally tell when a dog is angry because their facial expressions are similar to ours. But could you tell what a dolphin or whale looks like when it's angry or even when they're happy? Do sharks show their teeth when they smile? Does a giraffe? Facial and micro-expressions might be automatic and cross-cultural but gestures and emblems differ greatly between cultures. Gestures are broad motions. You raise your hand, you sweep your arm. Emblems, such as nodding your head, are also culturally defined. Up and down might mean yes in one culture, but no in another. You must know the culture to interpret the signs. For example, in Egyptian culture, you indicate tomorrow by looping your hand in the air. But the day after tomorrow requires two loops. In some cultures, distress is displayed by covering your face. In other cultures, you put your hands on top of your head. Language is, of course, culturally differentiated, but so is almost language. I have a friend in France who says, p. It's not actually a word, but it's a common verbal shrug of the shoulders. So what do you think? P. Given the complexity and diversity of displaying emotions, it's not surprising that there's no single theory of what emotions actually are or why they occur. But all the theories agree that thinking is important. In fact, you can't have emotion without thinking. The first and oldest theory of emotion is that you observe, feel, and then do. This common sense approach says that you see a bear, you feel afraid, and you run away. According to this view, a stimulus elicits an emotion, and in turn that emotion causes a motor response. In contrast to this traditional view, the James Lang theory of emotion is that you see a bear, you run away, and then feel afraid. James and Lang believe that emotion is the interpretation of physiological stimuli. It is the ultimate feel-by-doing approach. According to them, you first act and think later. Additionally, if you want to feel in love, you would act as if you were in love. The action causes the emotion. A third theory of emotion is the two-factor theory. Here's the short version. Two researchers, Shatner and Singer, told subjects that they were receiving vitamin shots. To one group, they gave epinephrine, also called adrenaline, which speeds up the heart and increases blood flow. To the other group, they gave a placebo of saline solution, sterile salt water. Then the study got clever. The subject, one at a time, was put in a waiting room with another person, and an experimenter pretending to be normal. If the experimenter acted friendly, happy, and playful, so did the subject with the epinephrine boost. But if the experiment acted aggressive, so did the epinephrine subject. The salt solution didn't change activity levels. According to the two-factor theory, you need bio-boost and a context. According to this approach, I see a bear. The broad physiological cues tell me to do something. And the context tells me I'm not shaking with laughter, I'm shaking with terror, so I should run. The fourth basic theory of emotion requires more thinking. This cognitive mediation approach suggests that we are always sampling and tracking our body sensations. And when this process detects a potential threat, it alerts the system. The result is a series of reactions, behavior, feeling, and physiological feedback. According to this view, I see a bear, I determine that I'm in trouble, the bear is not in a cage, and I run, scream, feel afraid, and wish I'd wore better shoes all at the same time. 